In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to look at how you can take a logo and move it across the screen and reveal the characters of a title. This comes as a result of an interaction with one of my subscribers who wanted to do that in a church context. So we'd like to have you look at the following example, and then we'll show you the procedure to create this yourself. What I've done is I've taken this video of a guy taking notes on a piece of paper with an open Bible, and that's going to be my background. So what I want to do is add a title. I'm going to go to the upper left corner and click on Titles, and then I'll take the default My Title and drag it down to a higher numbered track. I want to position it carefully, so what I want to do is use my time code on the lower right by the preview screen. So I'm going to click in the second value and click 1, move over to the frames and type in 15 and press enter. That will move my playhead to that location. I'll hit M. That will give me a timeline marker. So I'm going to drag my title so it lines up with that marker and it will match the duration of my clip. We're going to do some editing, but I want to do it with a grid because I'm going to make a lower third. So what I need to do to show the grid lines in the new interface is right click anywhere in the preview screen then I click on grid lines and then I choose the grid lines I want. In this case, let's do an 8x8. Eight eight. Next thing I want to do is do some editing on the title. With that highlighted, I click on the Edit button. Let's change the size and move and drop it on my grid. Now I want to do some advanced editing. So I'm going to click on the Advanced button in the lower right corner of my controls for titles. And before we do the further editing, we'll change the text to speaker, colon. And then what I want to do is add a backdrop. So I'm going to click on the backdrop box on the left side. And I notice immediately I have five options. I want to use the one on the right that will take the backdrop all the way across the screen. The color is OK, but I like to change it slightly. So I click on the color. And let's do something that's maybe a little bit uh, more in the blue family. So I have speaker and let me add a bit of a shadow. Let's do a shadow and let's make the distance down to one. Make it stand out a little better. At this point, I would normally add another title in this title text. But if I do that, I'll run into a problem because I'm going to mask the second title. And if I mask the second title, it will interfere with this backdrop. So I'm going to click OK and keep this for now, just as it is. Next thing I want to do is add another title. So I'm going to close my controls. And then we'll take another title. And I'll drag a default title down to another track. Again, I need to determine where I want it to start. So I want to make sure I'm clicked on my entire project here. And let's select a time code again. Uh, let's go like four seconds and 15 frames. Press Enter and do M for a timeline marker. Oh, I have a clip marker. So I use Shift M to remove it. I, want, I don't want the clip highlighted. Have it where I want finally. So what I'm going to do is move my second title. And I'll increase the duration to match the entire clip. Now what I want to do with the second title, we're going to move it down. We're going to change the font size of it. So we'll click go to the edit mode. And let's reduce it down a little smaller than the word speaker. I could use a different font if I wanted here. Let's do a different color. Let's do something, say, in the yellow family. Brighten it up a bit. Click on OK. And then I also would want to do, in this case, let's do a bit of a shadow like we did before. Make it one. And now I'm going to take this and I want to make sure it's left aligned. And we're going to type in our speaker's name for this one. And there we have our speaker. Now what we're going to do is do some modification on the speaker. So what I want to do is cause it to be revealed from one point in time to another. 
So with the, that on the track, we're going to do some advanced editing again, but in a different way. So I want to have a timeline marker there, and then I want to set another timeline marker where I want the mask. The mask is going to move and then stop moving. I'm starting it here at 415. Let's give it three seconds. So I'm going to let's make it 715. Now I press M. I want a timeline marker. This is because I want the markers to affect everything I edit when I'm in the text mode of editing my titles. So we're going to have a mask and it's going to need these two markers as reference. That's why we're doing it this way. This time when I highlight the clip, I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to do advanced mask editing. And now what I want to do is select a mask. I'll take the rectangular one, the fourth one on the right. And you notice it will reveal only that title. So I'm going to start by making the mask big. You can waste space on a mask if you want to. And I'm going to drag it all the way to the left so you don't see anything but the word speaker. And then I'm going to set move my playhead to the beginning and set a keyframe right on that timeline marker. Then I'm going to go to the next timeline marker that I have. And we'll set another keyframe simply by dragging it over. And there's my timeline marker. So if we start and just play this part, you're going to see as the mask moves, it's going to reveal the gentleman's name. So that's great. So we got that done. We'll click on OK. So we have the first parts done. Now we're going to work on the logo. To work on the logo, we're going to go to our media room again. And I'll do images only. I'm going to take this logo that I designed. We want the logo probably to be on another track. We'll start about there. Again, I could put a precise timeline marker in here if I wanted. We'll increase the duration to match everything else. Now the logo is way too big and in the wrong place, but we'll fix that. So I'm going to move to the press the home key. Take me to the beginning of that that particular track with the logo. And we'll move it here and make it maybe a little bigger yet. And see if we can get the word North Point right in the middle. And so we're going to start there. Now what I want to do is I want to fade it in. An easy way to fade it in, like with many other programs, we're going to widen this here on the timeline. I'll use the control key and click. This is my opacity line. I'll, I'll set an opacity value by control click in the upper left corner. We'll drag it down. That was faster than I like. So I'll click back on here again, hold the control key down and move. Move it in a little bit so it'll fade in a bit slower now. And then I want it to move to match the movement of my mask. So that's what these are for. So when I click on this here, we're going to do some positioning of this. So I highlight this. I click on Edit. And now I want to go into Advanced Edit for my image. Click on the first keyframe. I'm going to set the position value. It doesn't move from where it started. I go to the next timeline marker and now I'm going to set another keyframe. With that set, if I move this, it will change the values here. So we're going to move it over here. Now, if you want to make sure you're absolutely horizontal, what you do is you check the Y values on position and size at each keyframe marker. So if I start here and check this value, it's 778. I click back on this one, that's 778. So I was perfectly horizontal. When I play it, we'll find that it matches the movement of the characters. Last thing I'm going to do is close this window, go back into my media. This time I'm going to select uh, audio and I'll pick a uh, an audio clip. So that would be one way. Now, if I were to tighten this up, I would tighten up the 
the movement of this logo with the letters a little closer, but that's the principle of it. Now, if you want to use this, say, for multiple kinds of situations, what you do is you save this, you do File, Save As, and I would call it maybe Intro. Let's do that. I'm going to go File, Save Project As, I'm going to call it Intro. Let's say I'm in a new project. And I want to use that intro, but change the name of the speaker and maybe something else. As I click on the My Projects on the left side, and I click on the Import Project, I'm going to use the intro that I just saved before. It will import it. And now I can use this as the building block for another project that I'm working on. I can take the, the clip here, for example, that I used and delete it. What I'm going to do is go to the My Media again, and I'll take a different video. Put this here. So this would be my new video in the background. I can take the individual that I want to change, click here. Simply go to the edit mode on my title. I can change the pastor's name. His brother Pete. And now when I play this, I have the same intro, some differences. So that's how to do this somewhat complicated task in CyberLink PowerDirector.